from fast. Uh, I can't believe I had to deal with that. <sighs> well, at least Eggman was funny. Now, thankfully, that never happened. <laughs> thankfully, the studio actually listened to the fans and actually made a change instead of saying how the fans need to respect the creators' creative decisions or whatever Hollywood excuses to make terrible movies nowadays. Uh, and now we're getting a sequel. Can you believe that just a few years ago, not even that long ago, we were crying about the manhog thing, and now suddenly there's a brand new Sonic movie that everybody is excited for. It's got knuckles and tails. It's got so many references to the video games. It's just, wow, I, I, I can't believe it. We live in the good timeline, uh, but I wonder what would have happened if the sequel had the man hog. Not, not, not something I think about. Nope. Mm -mm. So, are you guys ready to watch Sonic the Hedgehog 2? Well, I'm ready when you are, Sonic. Yeah, folk. And it's gonna feature all three of us. It's gonna feature you, Tails, and me. Cause uh, we're we're the trio. We we are the uh, we're the, the classical chaos emerald trio thing. Whatever. I, I don't know. But we're the trio. Well then, let's let Math Dominus take over the review then. Hello there guys, it's Math Dominus, and today I'm going to be reviewing Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Can you believe that a few years ago we were going to get a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, but it was going to have this weird manhog design, but then the studio decided to listen to the fans for once and actually redesign Sonic, and the movie ended up being a success that we're now getting a sequel with much more Sonic lore hammed into it. And I gotta say, for Sonic fans everywhere, you are definitely going to like this movie. Now, the plot is rather simple. Sonic the Hedgehog is doing some vigilante work because he wants to be a superhero. But Tom Wachowski, the donut lord from the previous movie, tells Sonic that the moment when he becomes a hero will come, but he doesn't choose that moment. The moment chooses him. And then by some coincidence, Dr. Robotnik returns from the Mushroom Planet and he brings back Knuckles the Echidna. As they attempt to locate the Master Emerald, a very powerful artifact that can control the entire universe with a thought. Oh yeah, this movie is bringing in even more lore from the Sonic franchise than the previous movie, and it only gets better from there. On another planet, Tails Miles Prower arrives on Earth in order to warn Sonic of the impending doom. As it turns out, Tails is actually a fan of Sonic and he sees him as his hero. The moment now finally choosing him, Sonic and Tails team up in a race to find the Master Emerald before Robotnik and Knuckles get their hands on it and take over the entire universe. Admittedly, the plot is a rather basic, formulaic adventure film. But what makes this movie great is the fact that it actually expands on the first movie. The first movie was really just mostly about Sonic trying to fight Dr. Robotnik, but in this movie, there's more things added from the lore of Sonic. Like the Master Emerald, the Chaos Emerald, Dara Robotnik's more outrageous machines, Knuckles, and Tails, there's a lot more from the lore that was added into this movie. And not only that, but it expands upon the lore from the very first movie. In the 2020 film, the opening scene was just kind of a rather quick backstory to showcase how Sonic got to Earth. In the second movie, however, that opening scene gets much more expansion. Like, we learn more about why the Echidna tribe was after Sonic and Longclaw. And for those of you who don't remember, Longclaw was the owl lady that raised Sonic in the first movie. She doesn't really get a whole lot of character in that first movie, nor does she get a lot of character in this second movie. However, her race is explored upon. We get to learn more about the world that Sonic came from. In short, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 does what every great sequel needs to do, expand upon the first movie. The first movie was rather simple, Sonic was just being chased after Robotnik. The second movie explores the world of Sonic and includes a much higher stake. You thought the first movie, it was really high stakes with Sonic almost being captured by Dr. Robotnik, but in this movie, the entire world and universe and even multiverse is at stake. 
So yeah, the movie is really much bigger than the first movie, however, it wouldn't be as great if it weren't for the characters of the movie. Sonic goes through an arc about learning to be a better hero with great power comes great responsibility, and that it's not just about taking care of yourself, it's also about being responsible for other people. Now, admittedly, Sonic doesn't change all that much when it comes to personality. He's still rather an immature kid he was at the beginning of the movie right towards the end. But it's clear that he has changed in terms of how he views as being a hero. A hero isn't just someone who catches the bad guy, but it's also someone who protects others. That is what being a hero is truly about. Now, when it comes to Tails the Fox, he's a rather weak character. It feels like he's just there for exposition, and he doesn't get a whole lot of characterization. However, what makes this character unforgettable is his dynamic with Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic acts as this sort of big brother towards Tails, and helps him grow throughout the movie to become much more brave and a hero, just like Sonic. There's also a scene where Tails reveals his backstory and you can really sympathize with the little guy. He feels like he's a weirdo, but when he saw Sonic, how much of a hero he acts, he was inspired by him that maybe being different isn't so bad. But, the best character in the movie is Knuckles the Echidna. He's the one who has the most backstory and character growth in the movie. He starts off as the secondary antagonist, only thinking that he can fulfill his destiny in one way. But then by the end of the movie, he grows and learns to be more open to others and that he doesn't have to be alone anymore. So the arcs, the personality, the colorfulness of the characters is what makes this movie worth watching. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, you guys are going to love them. Now, when it comes to the human characters, they're not all that fleshed out. They rather have a silly arc, and honestly, you might get bored of them. But luckily, their scenes are few and far between. As the movie spends most of the runtime focusing on Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Something which critics apparently complained about. Really, the only human character that is a whole lot of fun is Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, but otherwise, the movie is great. I give it a 8 stars out of 10 rating. Oh my god!